So while he's getting it connected, just a comment related to the last talk. Without consciousness, we can definitely react to the world and to the universe, but we will not know it's there. So, my dear friend asked me to summarize this meeting, which is um, impossible. I took lots of notes, so I was not listening to you when I had my laptop open. I was taking notes and I really did not know how to summarize this meeting. It's impossible. It was an amazing meeting. The presentations were incredible. And when um, Fitch gave his presentation, he said something. He said, what makes language very particular about human language is that you can form arbitrary, arbitrary hierarchical structures from arbitrary data. So I thought, there it is. He's just given me the formula to summarize this meeting. So I decided to create an arbitrary hierarchical structure from the data that is presented. And I will demonstrate the humanness in coloring it the way that humans do, which means that it's probably very wrong. And I hope that you can identify some of your contributions. So this is not mine. You should think of this as a caricature of the meeting. It's not mine. It's yours, but with some human bias to it. So, and it's, okay. so what makes us human? Let's read it. It is a state that only the human can achieve, a state where a critical mass of causal biological interactions, Christoph, form arbitrary number of hierarchical structures from arbitrary data. <laughs> Not just language, anything. You form arbitrary structures. Second, the critical mass of causal interactions required for forming these hierarchies is the ability of the whole human body the Yataman, to connect the world through the brain. The brain is the connector to the world. That's why we study the brain, because we want to understand our connection to the world. The way the brain couples the body to the world is highly adaptable. I'm taking quotes from people, if you have noticed, which allows us to learn and play internally. That's what Amnan Shashua mentioned by generating an arbitrary new number of sequence of hierarchies, a flow of the mind. Once we could join a critical number of scenarios in time together, we got addicted and the evolutionary pressure for learning and memory increased and we started to join them together across longer and longer time scales to be able to look far into the future, Naftali. This allowed us to build our own sense of self, define our personalities by pressured by others. I wrote this very fast. <laughs> make predictions far into the future, but also makes us vulnerable and easily fooled. We had the beautiful virtual reality fooling of ourselves and our self. Arbitrary logical hierarchies across time allows us to form concepts, language and fiction, giving us an imagination and creativity to create art, make up stories, form myths, cooperate with strangers, Yuval, together allows us to form clans, kingdoms, empires and the future human society. Our ability to create these structures is a blessing and a curse. It creates a confusion and conflict within each of us about who we are and what is the truth. What is ethics? What is the right absolute ethics? Giving rise to logic and dogmatism with which we can debate any fact, any story, opinion or belief leading to war and peace and asking any question including what makes us human. So the mechanism, quickly, 
It's not a specific gene, a protein, synapse, or neuron, or brain region that couples the body to the world. It's every molecule in the human brain is coupled to every, mo every molecule in the body, which is coupled to every anchor in the world. Breathe in, breathe out. What are you doing? You're coupling. The brain regions, neurons, synapses, molecules, genes that we do find correlated with human-like functions, language or emotions, are hubs in a hierarchical network serving that specific capability. We should not get too excited about them. They're just hubs. The basic building blocks of DNA, genes, protein cells, ion channels, receptors, synapses, neurons and glia are not completely new in humans. They're linear continuations in evolution. Instead, the brain evolved regulators of the building blocks. Regulators of genes, the microRNAs. The microRNA, proteins, cells, ion channels, receptors and synapses. It is the regulators where we changed and manipulated the building blocks. And when you combine them, with bigger proportion, the human brain became bigger in proportion to the body, more than other animals, to get a higher resolution coupling to the world. You can have a very low resolution or you can have a higher resolution. If you have more neurons, more synapses, you have more regulators to adapt and control this coupling, you gain resolution. More neurons, synapses and more complex networks of neurons and enhancements to these functions. We saw from Huib how the neurons are having, processing more information, transmitting more information in the human brain. It's together, the increased numbers of neurons and synapses and regulators expanded our flexibility to create different states. States, again, you are your state, you are not your brain. You're, you're the states that your brain can move into to point to a point where our consciousness escaped reality. The details don't matter to understand it, Naftali. They don't matter. You can understand it without knowing the details. But will it happen without the details is the big question. The future is much simpler than the past. It's simple. It's a very simple future that we faces all of us. We are in a race an evolutionary race for intelligence. Some say that intelligence is about the ability to solve problems. I'd say that artificial intelligence has taught us what intelligence is. It is the ability to throw away the garbage and focus on the one thing that is necessary. It is information theory. So that's the future, and to do that, it is artificial intelligence is going to throw away the garbage, but to do that, you need data. And so it's open science. If we can have science open, we can select from that, we can accelerate what humans can do, and there is nothing, nothing standing in the way of human society reaching a utopia, except us. If we take in the garbage, we have to learn how to throw away the garbage. So with that, I just want to lastly say thank you very much on behalf of myself, Camilla, I think of everybody here for an amazing meeting, an amazing spirit. Again, Iran, Liran, Avi, Idan, I mean, this was historic. This is a landmark, it's a flag that now it begins. We don't know where it's going to, what it's be, the beginning of, but it is beginning. And it begins here in Jerusalem in this incredible building that you managed to get built. And we thank you very much for an incredible time. Thank you.